Beijing's 2008 Olympics have sparked urban redevelopment on an unprecedented scale. The Olympic Stadium and Village alone employs around 25,000 labourers and the total project is costing £42 billion. Throughout Beijing there has been more construction over the past year than the whole of continental Europe over the past three years. Yet at least half of these new developments will remain empty, unaffordable to your average Chinese. So effectively they're being built solely to ensure Beijing looks shiny and modern when the world's cameras arrive in 2008. Meanwhile, almost all the city's traditional Hutong districts are being torn down with well over half a million inhabitants already forcibly evicted from their homes. I've come to one of the oldest Hutong districts to seek out an American who lives here. Welcome to Beijing. Mike Meyer has started to teach English to the older members of his local community because they're keen to be able to help out foreign visitors during the Olympics. Do you speak English? Do you speak English? I can speak a little English. Very good. So I didn't wish to disturb you, just yeah. um, interested in what you're doing here. So, uh, do you mind if I just sit and watch, is that sure, okay? Sure, sure, sure. Come, come to the front. Uh, okay. Come, come, come. <laughs> Mike wasn't going to waste the opportunity of a real Englishman in his class. Um, I am a comedian, funny person. Um, Tough crowd, tough yeah, crowd, tough right? crowd, exactly. But I've played tougher crowds than this in my time, and I felt professionally obliged to win them over. Chinese food is beautiful. I love Chinese food. I also love Qingtao. Qingtao beer? Qingtao? Yes. Now that I have them warmed up, the lesson can begin. Sorry, could, could you speak slowly? What do you do? It struck me as a tragic irony that these old folks would probably have been forcibly evicted from their homes here long before the Olympics begin. Thank you very much. Good, good. The, the value of this neighborhood isn't necessarily the buildings itself, but it's the intangible heritage, right, the cultural yes, heritage, yes, yes. and again, the social network that still exists here. Hello, hello. Will this be here in, in, in two years' time? That's the problem. Nobody knows. You know, in Beijing, when you're, there's no uh, civil planning bureau you can go to and ask, oh, when will my home be torn down? I mean, this whole city right now, one of the reasons for the destruction of this old heritage, it's not that they're afraid of losing face, it's that they can't imagine losing face before mm. the world. Mm -hmm. Beijing, this is its coming out party to show the world. Yes. This is the capital of the world's next superpower. Yes. You know, this is not a communist state. This is not a weak nation that's been invaded by America and England and Japan and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is all part and parcel of it. You know, let's not lose face before the world. I vote! You know, surprisingly, there's very little crime in this mm -hmm. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they put up all the arrests for the week. They post it. You know whose house got broken into, what was taken, uh, name of the criminal, and whatnot. So it's again, I like it because it's the complete opposite of this anonymous suburban life. You know, you. Come mm -hmm. got Fajr one baha. Walking around here, I haven't seen any other Westerners that live here. I'm the only one in this neighborhood. <laughs> it <laughs> seems the 57,000 people. Yes, I'm the only one. So you can imagine the uh, every move I make is watched closely. Um, is it really? If I get drunk one night, the next day it's oh, you know, little plum blossom was drunk. <laughs> and over little and over. plum blossom. Yeah, unfortunately, my name is little plum blossom in Chinese. It's actually <laughs> Eastern heroic plum blossom. All oh, right. There's a lot of good things to say about living mm. in a traditional neighborhood like mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. but we also have to be honest, a lot of these houses are dilapidated, they're awfully cold in the wintertime, and then there's this little issue that when you have to go to the loo, this is where you go. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, please. Uh... <laughs> 
take my word for it, the stench is overpowering. So excuse me while I talk and hold right, my breath at the yes. same time. You may not want so to look too closely in here. It's not heated. Uh -huh. uh, it's not air conditioned. And often the light's not very good either. And there's a guy just in there, so I think we should come out actually. <laughs> So this is the entrance to, to where I live, a mm -hmm. uh, place about 100 years old. In Chinese, this is called a dadza, you are, which just means a big, messed up garden, basically. Mike's house is deep within a maze of small courtyards within courtyards, almost impenetrable to an outsider. Come on in. Hey, Daniel, ni and this is one of his neighbours, his surrogate grandmother, who proudly invites me in to see her house, or rather her room. It's is beautiful. it good, she said? Yes, it's good. She raised two children here. So her first son was born in 1947, her second son was born in 1949. But she doesn't look old enough. <laughs> She's over 80. <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> How many kids do you have? No, none. No. She's saying you have to have kids. <laughs> the night is young. <laughs> Extraordinary to think that this lady has lived in this one room for more than 60 years. She was here even before Chairman Mao came to power, and her life seems untouched by the turbulent changes in her country. Extraordinary, too, for me, a fellow Westerner, to think of Mike living in such basic conditions. So this is my place. Um, this is my kitchen. Please come in. Thank you. You've got two rooms, basically. Yeah. So this is my bedroom. For most people living in the West, this would be considered poor living conditions. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't wish to be rude. No, it is. It is. <laughs> Let us see where you live. No, but it is. <laughs> It is poor living conditions. And so, so why on earth does Mike want to live here? I wanted to see a part of Beijing that is disappearing. Uh -huh. I didn't want to be one of those people that said, oh, old Beijing is going away and we have to do something to help those people and, and not have ever lived in mm. it or experienced mm. it. For the first time since arriving in China, I feel I'm beginning to understand a little of their culture. Thank you for showing me uh, a part of Beijing that I, I wouldn't have seen if I'd just come here as a tourist. Well, let's hope that if you come back for the Olympics, it'll still be here. I hope so. <laughs> Good to see you. Good see to you see again. You. Cheers. Bye. Goodbye.